We are at the Qutub Minar complex in Delhi, a UNESCO World Heritage Site that is home to several monuments and many many stories. But today we are going to talk about the other minar in this complex, this incomplete structure, the Alai Minar. What is it and why is it incomplete? To answer that, we will first have to talk about the king who built this structure, Alauddin Khilji. You probably heard of Alauddin Khilji, the bloodthirsty tyrant, an egomaniac, destroyer of Hindu kingdoms. How much of that is true? In 1296, Alauddin Khilji murdered his uncle, the ruling Sultan of Delhi, in cold blood. He then hoisted his head on a spear for all to see. It was a loud statement and a sign of things to come. Alauddin crowned himself the king of Delhi, raised huge armies and quickly brought large parts of North India under his control. During one of his campaigns, the spoils of war included a handsome slave, a transgender named Malik Kafur. Khilji promptly fell in love with him. Kafur had a sharp mind and was every bit as ruthless as Khilji was. Together, they unleashed a wave of invasions on the south, destroying temples and plundering countries as far down south as Madurai. Khilji and Kafur delighted in using cruelty as their main weapon, even in local administration. Merchants who were caught cheating had an equal weight of flesh cut off from their limbs. Thieves were quickly put to death and their heads were displayed on a tower called the Chor Minar. You can still see it at a busy roundabout in Delhi. Was Alauddin Khilji pure evil? Well, we must remember that nothing in history is black and white. Alauddin was a ruthless king, but he was also a brilliant general. His greatest accomplishment? He kept the Mongols out of India. The Mongols were merciless invaders who were known to wipe out entire cities and cultures. But Alauddin was more than a match for them. He beat them back six times in a row. Legend has it that he once chased the retreating Mongols, beheaded 8,000 of them and put up their heads on the walls of his fort. You can still see the ruins of his old fort in Delhi. It is called the Siri Fort, meaning the Fort of Heads. So was Khilji really the religious bigot he's made out to be? Well, there's no doubt he was a merciless king and Hindus were often at the receiving end. He did raid temples, but more often was motivated by the wealth they contained. He even imposed a special tax on the Hindus because he knew he could get away with it, which is why many historians view him more as an opportunist than a religious fanatic. Khilji was not an orthodox Muslim. He often skipped Friday prayers. He did lend an ear to his Islamic scholars, but he didn't always toe their line. At the peak of his success, he even wanted to start his own religion. So where does this incomplete monument fit in? Like all megalomaniacs, Alauddin also wanted to leave a lasting legacy with a grand monument. So he commissioned the Alai Minar, a tower of victory that was to be twice as tall as the Qutub Minar. What better way to awe posterity? But what you see here is just the base of the monument. Why wasn't it finished? Alauddin Khilji died in 1316, before this monument could be completed. What followed was a bloodbath. His trusted slave and lover, Malik Kafur, took the throne and promptly turned rogue. You see, by Islamic law, a blind man can never be king. So he had Khilji's elder sons blinded and imprisoned a younger one. And within a month of all this, he himself was murdered. The bloodbath did not end there. Khilji's younger son now took the throne of Delhi, but only after blinding his own six-year-old brother. And then he too was murdered, ironically by his own slave turned partner. And that was the end of the Khilji dynasty. 600 years have passed and many kings have come and gone. But the Alai Minar continues to stand incomplete. A reminder of a line of brutal kings who lived by the sword and died by the sword. 